and welcome to the Behind the Curtains podcast with Speaker Hub. My name is Esther Sniffa, um, and if you haven't been here before, Speaker Hub is Europe's fastest growing network of speakers and trainers. In this series of podcast interviews, we feature some of our most interesting VIP speakers, and they talk about their projects and what they're working on, and share with us ideas on how to become better communicators. Um, today I'm talking with Philip Weiss, and Philip Weiss is the founder of a company called ZN. He's also an expert in how companies and individuals can change their mindsets to learn and adapt more quickly. Um, he's coined the phrase hyperthinking, which he's going to get into in just a second. So let's get started with the interview. Philip, where are you from, just to start us off? So, uh, well, I have, I'm a actually typical Brussels mix. So my, I was born in Bermuda. Uh, my father's German, my mother's British. I went to school in, in uh, Francophone Brussels, and then I studied at university at Oxford and uh, met my wife in India, and we're oh. back in Brussels. So that's a lot of cultures mixing together. So can you tell me what topics you speak about? Um, well, I, I talk about a, a range of topics from business and entrepreneurship uh, to digital communication because I've set up a digital uh, communication agency and one of my favorite topics is to talk about mindset um, and how we need to think in uh, this new age of constant change and technology and that's what I call hyperthinking. So tell me a bit about hyperthinking. What is it exactly? So what I realized when I started my business at the, the, the beginning and because we were working in a, a different area, which was the area of internet communication, for a lot of clients, this was very new. And people in big companies don't often like change uh, because you have very structured environments, which are actually kind of resistant to change. And I realized that it wasn't the amount of money that they needed or the amount of resources or the right piece of software. It was actually mindset that was the critical ingredient in determining how successful a project was. And I tried to say, well, what is that mindset? You know, what are the key ingredients contained in that? And I decided to kind of create a concept and capture in that concept the key ingredients for you know what I would define a success in this uh, ever-changing world, and I call this hyperthinking, and it has four key dimensions, uh, which are hyper-shifting, which is shifting paradigms, so looking at things from a new perspective, hyperlinking, which is using digital networks to connect, uh, to find new customers, new ideas, to communicate, to connect with your uh, community, Hyperlearning, which is really you know one of the key skills we need in this new environment, which is to be able to learn to learn. So the ability to become a self learner, to use all the tools available to do that, and to learn to think more creatively. So to use creativity tools to develop our creative thinking. And finally, hyperacting, which is actually about agility and being able to change. Because most of the time, when we have a strategy, it turns out to be wrong, and we have to adapt it as we go along. And so when a company would hire you in, how do you go about assessing what they need and training them in these different hyper tools? Well, as I said, there are two different areas. Our business is communication. And I told you at the beginning that we have, I have a, you know, a digitally focused agency. And in fact, we now say that you know, digital marketing is now just marketing. Digital communication is now just communication because digital is so important. It's, it has had such an impact on all aspects of communication that basically it's, it, it permeates every communication program. So we work on these programs and so we approach clients, you know, the normal way when they have a need, they, they need to communicate something to an audience and we define a strategy for them create, uh, we do some research, we create a plan, we put together a campaign concept, we develop a creative idea to bring together the campaign, and then we help execute the campaign. And what are some of the so, challenges you've come across when it comes to training people in these, these new communications ideas? I think the key challenge is that these tools are very different and create new opportunities, but they simply are, are you know, they keep changing. Uh, they're, they're quite new. You hear new technologies all the time, you know, whether it's Facebook, then it's uh, Snapchat, uh, Instagram. And, and for our clients, like, you know, how do these things fit? Do they make sense? Do I need to invest in them? So 
our job is to help them understand and assess these tools and put them together in, a, in an organized campaign. And I think the biggest challenge is resistance to change because people don't like this, you know, the fact that they've been trained a certain way and suddenly they have to question that and do things differently. So the second part is to have a really sound strategy, not just something that's built on the latest fad. So you've, you've heard about some technology, so you want to do a campaign around it. No, it has to be a sound strategic a business plan, and then you use the right tools to get to your goals. It's interesting. So it's not just like, oh, we should be on Twitter, and I feel like we should be on Twitter because everybody's on Twitter. It should be, no, this is right That's... for our business. This is the kinds of stuff we're going to post, and this is how it's going to be useful to that audience. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's really important to not do that. I mean, there's nothing worse than a campaign when a the CEO bangs on the table and says, we need a Twitter campaign when there's no strategic thinking behind it. So the starting point is, what are we trying to do? You know, who is the target audience? How can we connect with them? How can we meet our business goals? And then you say, okay, well, we have a message. We have different channels to reach them. We have different ways to do that. And often people get so excited about the new, the latest and greatest technology that they forget the simple but most effective ones, which are now things like having a good, clear website having an email database that you use properly. And then on top of that, you add social media, Twitter, Facebook, and, and you know, YouTube videos and things like that. But you have to have the basic things in place so that the rest can work. I think that makes perfect sense. Philip, can we explore a little bit about um, what you previously touched on with mindsets? What, how did you get into mindsets as a, as a topic? Um, well, it's something that I, I've always been, you know, fascinated by. So I, I studied um, philosophy, politics, and economics uh, at Oxford University, and philosophy was one of my uh, kind of subjects I was, I was greatly interested in. And I, I discovered um, Edward de Bono. He's the inventor of a concept called lateral thinking, and these are techniques for learning to think differently. And he created these simple tools. There's a, a book called The Thinking Hats, which is extremely useful and interesting. And um, I was actually interested in, 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 his, uh, in his concepts and how we can improve our thinking. I mean, that, that's you know, the thing that we do not learn to do at school or university is to, to think better. We, we learn to think about certain things, but we don't work on the thinking itself. So I thought, you know, how can we think, how can we transform our mindset? How can we challenge par our paradigm, our, our preconceptions, and look at things from a different perspective. And so, so for me, it's always been an area of interest. And then when I started my, my business, I realized that this was a, a really critical factor of success, because once you're able to change perspective, you can start doing things very differently. And can you give us an example of the effect that this has had, like either in your own business or a business that you've worked with? Well, maybe to give you an example uh, of a recent shift that we've done, we, we're, we're a kind of digital native agency. So ZN has been in, 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 around for 17 years now, so it's quite an old company for, for this space. And you know, as, as I created the, the company and started working on, on, on new projects, we were looking at you know, how to use the web as a lean and mean tool to challenge big campaign ideas and I, I was working with agencies that had their traditional model and you know the traditional advertising model was you have to come up with a big idea and you have to kind of do a big advert and a, a tv commercial and a line and i thought yeah well you know that that's all very nice but the reality is that online it doesn't work like that you have lots of little stories you have to connect with different audiences and and basically it's, it's a completely different approach so I, I i was very resistant to this and what I realized uh, now, over the, over the years, is that, in fact, the fundamentals of traditional advertising, which are to develop a very strong creative concept around which to build an entire campaign, actually are even more valid today than they were before. So we've made a kind of shift to really bring creative at the center of what we do, but to reconnect it in a different way to all the digital channels that are available. And why do you think this is so effective for reaching out to the audiences? The basic thing is that communication itself hasn't fundamentally changed. I mean, the place where it takes place and the way, the tools, the kind of engagement you can do are very different. But 
it's still about having a powerful emotional concept that connects to your target audience. So the basics are still, you know, it's still fundamentally about having a clear strategy, a target audience, being able to reach that target audience. So um, it's just important to remember when you work in highly innovative, highly changing industries, not to forget that there are certain basic things that you need to be successful and they haven't necessarily changed. So you shouldn't be enamored of change for the sake of change. Philip, can you tell us a little bit more about your company, ZN? Yeah, so ZN actually stands for Zeitgeist Net. So Zeitgeist means the spirit of the times in German, but it's also used in English. Um, and it reflects our philosophy of constant change. And the company from day one was built on the idea that communication was going to change fundamentally and was constantly changing. So instead of saying, oh, it's all about this piece of technology or that element or, or this new fad, it's, it's all about being able to understand and adapt to constant change. So that's what the name says about Zeitgeist. The N stands for network, and it's for two things. First, because our, our focus on digital, so we started, as I said, as a digitally focused agency, looking at the impact that digital has on everything else, which has now become you know, a core part of uh, any communication project. And the second thing is our network. So we, we, we strongly believe in the importance of building a network um, with the people that we work with. So we put together partnerships with expert agencies or freelancers that we bring together so that we're able to deliver the best possible value to our clients without having to have mass overheads and having a lot of flexibility. And it's also a global network. So we work with people in Europe, in the US, in India, in Croatia, and we put together the, the right team based on the projects that we have. So you're seeing a real mix of all of these different cultures and knowledge bases and mixing them together with these different needs that your clients have. A fascinating project. Thank um, you. My last question for today is what's in store for you for 2016? Um, well, 2016 is a, is a very exciting, very challenging year because we've been through this transformation where we've tried to refocus on some of the integration I talked about because now we're playing a much more central role with our clients. So we're not just doing digital as a separate, doing core strategy. So that means we really have to bring in that creative. So that's something that we've been doing uh, systematically for the last year, which is to bring that creative expertise. And we bring people from outside the agency to, to add this new perspective. We also are strengthening and deepening our relationships with PR and public affairs uh, partners so that we can really make sure we deliver the full mix of things. Um, and I think uh, our clients are, you know, the expectations for our clients has, has grown now. And so they want more than just some clever technological um, campaigns. They want something that will shift people's perception, that will engage with them emotionally, uh, and that will transform the conversations that they're involved in. So that's what we want to deliver. Well, it sounds exciting, Philip. I'd like to thank you for having this conversation with me today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And listeners, if you'd like to learn more about Philip Weiss and hyperthinking, please check out the accompanying article of this podcast on www.speakerhub.com. Until next time, this has been Esther Snip with Speaker Hub, and thank you for listening.